Interested in real estate? How about wealth? Well, they go hand in hand. And here, you'll learn all about it. Welcome to Be The Bank, a podcast where we discuss and debate the topics centered around real estate investing. Your host, Justin Bogard, shares insights into investing in real estate to create real wealth and passive income for you and your family. He'll share stories of real estate investments done right, walk you through the process of owning a real estate note, and most importantly, educate you so you can be the bank. This is Be The Bank, brought to you by American Note Buyers. Now, here's your host, Justin Bogard. Hello, listener, and welcome to the Be The Bank podcast. This is season six, episode number two. Today, I got my good friend, Mr. Jay Redding. He only lives a couple hours away from me. And we're going to be talking about passive investors, or sometimes we like to name this as private investors. And we're going to be having a good discussion about that today. So stay tuned. Mr. Jay Redding, how are you today? Hey, Justin, doing fantastic. Good seeing you. And thank you for having me on board. I appreciate it. You're welcome, my friend. Um, since we're only a few hours apart, I'm in Fishers, Indiana. You're in Fort Wayne. Um, I think we've teased each other before. We got about a half degree difference between <laughs> us in temperature. A half or maybe a degree on a really good day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's it's currently, as we're recording this, it's about eight, nine degrees outside. Full sun, though. I mean, yes. you can't go wrong with full sun. Um, luckily for me, I have enough windows where I'm at to where the sun heats up. Uh, the living space here, <clears throat> so I don't have to turn on the heater very often. <laughs> you probably get a little bit more sunlight than what we do up here because we get the the effect off of Lake Michigan with all oh, yeah. the clouds in the winter. So there, there's days at a time that it's cloudy. So now I tell you what, that is probably the worst for me. I'm sure sure most people are like this too. But if when it's cold winter time and it's really cloudy and the sun doesn't come out for a couple of days, it's just like man, you just can I just stay in bed? Like it's yeah. just, it's just bad. <laughs> so I, I've learned to not make really major decisions when the weather's like that, because <laughs> they're probably going to be a bad decision. <laughs> it's good to see the sun though. It's a great day. It's good. Oh man. It feels great. I, I kind of put my hands out there by the window when the sunlight comes out and be like, okay, I'm gonna get some vitamin D going in me, get my <laughs> energy up, get excited. I got yep. Jay Redding on today. So, yeah. so Jay, I, I started opening up the package here with, uh, Talk about private investors slash passive investors. You know, they they basically are passive investors. Mm -hmm. um, so I call you, them capital partners. That's what I call capital them. partners. Yeah, I, this is great. What other names have you heard? Oh, I, private investors. Yeah, or okay. private lenders. But I just like calling them capital partners. No, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I I guess that's something that we need to explain is that there are so many different things that we call these types of individuals. True. And basically, they're just looking for people to spend their money actively while they are receiving the passivity of it. A right. good way to explain it? Yeah. I mean, it, many times uh, they're they're busy professionals. They're busy individuals. It's already, you know, they're busy in their career. Uh, they want to uh, get a better return with essentially without the volatility of the market. They're looking for a better return than uh, a savings account or a CD. Uh, okay. And they're willing to take on, you know, or they're, they're willing to accept some moderate risk for that, uh, but not extravagant. Uh, but they just want it to be, you know, they want their money working for them, but they yeah. don't want to be in the middle of the game. They, they trust, honestly, the most critical part here is, they trust you. They trust me. Yeah. All right. That we're, we know what we're doing. We're experienced. We have a track record behind us that shows that we are doing it in the right way and performing and they gain the benefits of it and allows us to have more capital to be able to find deals and create greater cash flow so that we all benefit. So it's a win-win for everyone. Jay, I want to dive a little bit deeper into the the passive investor here. And sure. have you modeled or profiled the investors that have worked with you for all the stuff that, that you guys do with real estate and raising capital as far as like what specifically have they been investing in before they kind of came to Jay? Or maybe they most of them have already been in real estate and try to do some sort of real estate lending. 
Sure. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think there, there is a couple different avatars here that you have to be aware of. And uh, it kind of depends from the standpoint of who you are looking for your particular type of um, investment. All right. Okay. Um, on the real estate side, uh, and, and for the people who don't know, we have 40 rentals of our own. We've done over 100 retail flips and we uh, we buy, we create uh, notes and we sell notes as well. OK, so we're all in this same general space. Okay. Um, but if I'm looking for a passive investor who is um, I'm going to bring him on board for us to do a retail flip. OK, uh, particularly when I was just starting out, that's a totally different profile than someone that looks that wants the long term play. So I think it's always critically important on the investment that you have is what is the individual or, or your avatar that you're looking for for the investment that you've got going on right right now. That's fair. We have. Yeah, we have found for us. um We've we've had people who are busy. Basically, they're busy in their careers. Uh, my typical av avatar is someone who's willing to be with us five years. All right, and we typically set up things like five years at a time with the ability to renew. And quite honestly, most of them renew. Okay. Yeah. Once they start <laughs> receiving that income, they they like it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so. Um, the scenario is, is that they're busy in their own careers. They're, you know, they've got kids, wife, they're not active. They just want a better return and know that it is, I won't say the, the risk is minimal. All right. It's not an extravagant risk. All right. And they've got something that's backing that, that is a solid asset, uh, versus what's often yeah. called the, the, the security is high. Yeah. Yeah. So it's securitized. There's something that can protect them. It's always, and, and Justin, you know this, we both have talked about enough people. It is always, number one, the first priority is the preservation of capital. Yeah. Then it gets to, all right, what kind of returns are you looking? How does this look? When do I get paid? You know, all the other things. But you got to make sure that your capital partner feels comfortable that their capital is preserved. And, and that's, that is first and foremost. Have you seen a lot of your investors that um, that you get private money from? Have they been burnt by a similar other type of investment, or are they just simply looking for something else? Um, I, I'm saying that because a lot of the people that end up following me or end up coming over to American Note Buyers is they they really are getting tired of the stock market is the very common thing when i say rarely do i hear anything else but about the stock market is that is that the same with you yes it is you know and a lot of people I, i've had people who have challenged me whenever i've been <laughs> making my presentation I'm, as i'm sure you have as well oh yeah all right they'll say well i can make more money in the in, in the market and i said exactly and you can lose a lot more too very quickly yeah. I said, that's not the game that we're playing <laughs> in. You know, I, I always say, all right, every knowledgeable or experienced investor has a certain amount of money that they have for immediate needs. They have in a conser conservative areas, fixed income assets, and then they have some into, um, you know, they have money that's in the markets. All right. Where, where, which bucket are we playing in? We're playing yeah. in the fixed income asset bucket. And I can always argue from the standpoint, you know, what are you getting on your CDs? What are you getting? Um, what are you getting on insurance products? What are you getting in bonds? What are you getting in T-bills? All right. We're paying you a higher return backed by a solid asset that will never be worth zero. OK, you can be in the stock market and your paper can be worth zero. All yeah. right. And you're rewarded for that. But do you want to play the steady eddy? I always do the analysis between the tortoise and the hare. You know, the hare, the rabbit's going all over the place. That's the yeah. stock market. Or do you want to be the tortoise that's being nice and steady and eddy and predictable and you sleep well at night? That's us. We're boring. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we make you good money. Okay. Right. We're we're the babe, the brave Ruth of investments. We're just getting base hits, right? Yeah. Babe, I'm sorry, not Babe Ruth. Pete Rose. There we go. Pete Rose. P Pete Rose investments. Hit. Yeah, we're just getting yeah. base hits all the time. I don't know why I said Babe Ruth. 
Exactly. I guess I, I guess they might be similar in size at some point in their careers. <laughs> well, we get home runs every once in a while in there. So <laughs> he right. certainly had uh, plenty of them, but he had probably more strikeouts so, than most people yeah. too. That's true. So. <laughs> Got to have at bats to get hits. Yes. Um, yes. So most the common trait that I'm hearing from your side is they are interested in more conservative type of investments as opposed to more aggressive type of investments. Correct. So these would not be predictability. Is these would not want. be Bitcoin shoppers. These would not be, no. you know, people looking at, you know, um, maybe, maybe like oil and gas, maybe, I don't know if oil and gas would be more risky or not. I honestly don't know. I'm just saying that out loud. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. So that's, that's the profile that fits us as well. Mm -hmm. um, I they actually, might just, just yeah. saying, they, you know, they might invest in those things. OK, and they might in, invest in oils and, in you know, the stocks and gas and all the other things. OK, but they don't want all of it there. Correct. Want, yeah. Yeah. That's the line, the, they want a portion of it somewhere else that's pretty well protected. The lion's share of what they're investing in, they want it more conservative, controlled and, and yes. obviously secured. So they're OK with taking a lower return because they they, <clears throat> they anticipate they'd much rather have safety than they would um, right. volatility. So. Yeah, and that becomes more and more important as people get closer to retirement age. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I can, back in 2008, I can remember, all right, for many of you who do not know my background, I actually was in uh, uh, pharmaceutical sales for 17 years. I remember back in that era, there were some physicians that I called on who actually had retired right before 2008 and 10, all that hit, and they had to come back to work. Oh, geez. Okay, after all of that, because they lost so much in their portfolio. And what people don't realize is that, okay, you lose 20% or 10% in your portfolio and your, your, Financial advisor is going to say, oh, you don't want to get out. You don't want to get out now because, you know, it's a dollar cost averaging. All right. But what, you know, and maybe you're up 20 percent the next year. Well, do you not realize you got even if you increase 100 percent in the next year, you're only halfway there to what you lost. All right. Previously. I am much more of the Warren Buffett camp. It's like his he essentially states. And he has said this on more than one occasion. I know you know this. It's like your first rule of investing is not to lose money. And the second rule of investing is don't forget the first. Don't forget the first rule. Right? <laughs> okay. Don't forget the first rule. And it's like, okay, I get that. All right. So, um, you know, if you don't lose money, you don't have to have huge returns. Right. That's, and that's, you know, everybody's looking for the huge returns on the market and everything. And then you get burnt. Well, now you're you've lost everything that you gained. Don't lose. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. So so can we refer to you now as Jay Redding, the drug lord? Because I forgot that you were. In oh, no. Sales. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't do that. <laughs> OK. All right. All right. We'll, we'll delete that. From I'm not even I'm not even going to say what I sold. OK, so well, now, <laughs> now I got to change the podcast episode. I mean, you <laughs> yeah. ruined my one liner here. Come on, man. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. What uh, I at at some point I wanted to find out more demographics about my investor, and I say sure. my investor singular, but I, I mean you know plural in plural sense. Mm -hmm. And so I sent out a survey, and I asked uh, some specific questions, and I kept it private. And I said, hey, this is this is secured. You know, no one's going to see this but me. But I'm trying to gain clarity on all of you that trust me and want to invest with me so that I can go advertise to people just like you, obviously, sure. right? Sure. Try, trying to build, build my rapport that way. And so I was asking them questions about like, edu how long have they been educated? You know, what kind of degrees do they have? Did they, you know, was it just college? Was it just high school? Are they, you know, they have a doctorate and just talking about like what kind of salary they make with their W2s, like where do they work? And, um, I asked some other other questions about, you know, like their retirement, like what what are they what are their opinions on their retirement? And I gave them some multiple choice answers and stuff. And and I was really surprised by the answers um, that uh, a lot of people that happen to be 
in our, our database at the time, I answered these questions, a majority of them were like very well-educated people. Uh, they were obviously really conservative and stuff. So they had a lot of similar traits. And I, I kind of knew that, but I didn't really know that till I asked the question. So have you ever done anything like that with your investor database? I have, n I have not. I was really curious to, uh, yeah. to see what you uncovered. If I was going to guess, just knowing just thinking off the top of my head of our investor profile, all yeah. of them are well educated. Okay. Um, they're business owners, they're physicians, they're upper management. Um, they make a good income. They've got investable income. They have yeah. a 401k. I mean, I, you know, some of our favorite in, in helping people get started, one of our favorite avenues is helping people who maybe had an, a, a 401k at an old employer, but they didn't yeah. necessarily roll it over. We'll help them get that rolled over to a self-directed IRA and start making that, start making that make money. So, so that, that brings up my next question um, to talk about. And do you um, have most of your investors just use their retirement account to invest in this stuff passively or has it been cash mix of both like what what has been your experience in your database we have both i mean we have some who have uh uh we, we have uh, one couple that's with us that we actually help them sell their real estate portfolio and, and, and they decided to invest with us because we <laughs> we help them sell their portfolio so <laughs> uh so uh that's so the bottom line is, is that we've got both self-directed IRA money yeah. as well as people who just have funds in an LLC. They have uh, investment money that they have in an LLC that they're maybe buying some other things or yeah. in, in they've got loose change. They don't know where to move it right now. So they're willing to, to do something uh, with this. And th those I'm thinking of a couple here. They're a little bit more aggressive and they like they they're wanting a higher return. All right. But for the safety, particularly in a volatile market, they're willing to take a little bit lower return because they actually have their money deployed. All right. And it's making something rather than sitting idle somewhere because yeah. they didn't have a deal to invest it in at that point in time. That's a that's a yield killer right there is. When that's yeah. Nice yeah, it really is. Uh, we we kind of have a mixed bag. So we're more strong with the fund that we have, mm -hmm. we got probably 75% retirement money and the mm -hmm. other is cash. Huh? Um, when I was doing hypothecations and flipping notes to people, uh, it was honestly probably 50-50, 50% 50 50 mm -hmm. cash investors, 50% retirement investors. So I thought that was kind of an interesting stat as well. So interesting. Now I'm, yeah. I'm curious for, for you, those that you hypothecated with, or have those ended up being some uh, investors have who have put additional money into the note fund? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Oh. Yeah, they they fit the profile of the fund perfectly because it it's exactly what they're doing. So for those of you that don't know what the hypothecation term is, we're just basically saying, um, Jay, I'd like to borrow some money from you, and I'm going to go invest in this loan with your money, uh, but I'm going to put in some skin. I'm going to have some skin in the game too but I'm basically leveraging your money to go out and buy another loan. That's what the hypothecation is. So it's yeah. like, it's like for the, for the landlord that goes out and get a mortgage for a rental. It's like, it's like how we get a mortgage for our, the mortgage that we're buying. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we go about it. We typically will buy the note ourselves. That's what we'll do with our own capital. And then we will hypothecate to pull our capital out. And same, with, same um, thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same way. It's just, we're just backing into a little bit different direction yeah. how you typically go. So, yep. Um, Okay, so when things go bad, uh, mm -hmm. I want to know how that you never guys happens. Handle you know, you know that never happens. <laughs> it never happens. <laughs> not, on, on, not on camera. We'll say that. Not on the camera. It never happens. No. Now well, the camera's in front of you, buddy. And by the way, you guys can check out the YouTube channel, American Note Buyers YouTube channel, and look at the video stream of this podcast as well. You can see Mr. Jay Redding and his beautiful mahogany cabinet behind him with his it's like a trophy. <laughs> On top of the credenza oh, no, there. that's just uh, uh, the figurine up there. Man, so. you, I mean, you're killing people. They, like, we could have got more views on YouTube if you would have just said something fancy, man. <laughs> All right. When things go wrong, um, what? how do you handle it? Meaning, so let's talk about hypothecations, for example. So sure. you're borrowing somebody's money, mm -hmm. and you're going out and buying a passive investment with it, and you're getting cash flow from this passive investor. Sure. 
Uh, if that passive investment doesn't give you the cash flow, you're still on the hook to pay your investor. Uh, what what do you do in those scenarios and how do you handle that with your investors? And do you say, oh, crap. And then when that <laughs> happens. <laughs> hey, row. That doesn't Rutt make row. sense. Now what? So, yeah. Well, there's two things. All right. Number one is that uh, we we always keep reserves uh, back for that type of situation. All yeah. right. We will continue to pay the uh, the underlying borrower or, or the 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 person that we have borrowed from. We will continue to pay them as as, as our obligation. Yeah. However, in our legal documents, we do have the right to stop payment if we determine that we are going to pursue foreclosure on the note okay and we take ex we we take a lot of time to explain that to yep. the borrower um in excuse me to the to the private lender all right to our capital partner yeah um what they need to understand is just because we're not paying at that particular time the interest that is due the, to them does continue to accrue. Yeah. And that they, and when we up through the foreclosure process and when the prop, when the note is foreclosed upon and the judgment is made and the property is sold at the uh, sheriff's sale, all of that, can, those are all legal collectible balances that come back and you, and they'll get paid at one lump sum. Yeah. And that's why it's critically important that we explain that you need to be using money that's investing money, not money that you are looking right. to live on. Okay. Exactly. We typically will not go that route unless it gets to, we're not going to jeopardize and put the company into a, a negative position, yeah. but we, as long as we potentially can, can, and we, and we keep funds in reserve specifically to handle that. Yeah. Um, it does come back and we have gone through that process before. Um, it does come back and they get made whole at that point. They just need to understand. And, and we have it written in our documents. If, if a loan gets 90 days behind, we give them a call and let them know where we stand at that point in time is what we basically do. Fortunately, that has only yeah. happened once. So that's, that's a good thing. So hopefully we continue to pick good notes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's the key is is the whatever you're buying with their money, uh, you want to make sure it's a it's a strong asset that does perform or at least have some low risk in the deal. Because in the event of going through a foreclosure and I'm glad that and I wasn't surprised that you gave that answer because you're you're a good guy and, you know, you're a good fiduciary and steward mm -hmm. of other people's money. Um, and I try to instill the same same thing as well. So we. We'll do the same thing. You know, we'll definitely fault the payment as far as start. we'll start paying on it if our borrower is getting behind. But we'll also put a um, – and you, you probably do this too. So if the borrower that on the loan that I am getting where I'm receiving the passive income, if they're due on the first of the month, I'll probably change – to my investor, my lender, like they'll get paid on the 10th or 15th of the month. So Correct. it gives me a little bit of buffer as well. So I'm not going to be negative cash flow very often. But if I am, obviously, I'm going to make sure that they're paid to take care of because you're exactly right. The clock of accruing interest is turning <laughs> if I'm not making the yeah. payment to them. So no matter what happens on this side of the investment, their side of the investment, they're still going to get paid and taken care of. It's just that they might not get the cash flow. So and right. knowing your investor and knowing how they would react to that and and having that conversation, that transparency with them is absolutely critical because it builds uh -huh. and fosters a relationship for the future. So all of our investors, um, luckily, they they like us and they still want to do business with us. And I, I've uh -huh. tried to instill that stuff. And it sounds like your long term relationships have experienced the same thing with you. If anything goes bad, you're, you're going to take care. We're going to sure oh, they're, we're going to take that sword. Yeah, we're going to take that sword be, before we ever. Well, I've been doing this now for almost 20 years and there has been no lender. Uh, our capital partner that has ever lost a dime while working with us. So that's I think awesome. that's a good, uh, I think that's a good that's, track record behind us. And we'll that is the only that. stat to keep track of right there. Yeah. <laughs> no one really cares if you've done 20 million in deals. No one yeah. cares about that. How many times have you lost somebody's money? That's yeah. what they want to know. Never. They yeah. never have. That's so, and that's beautiful. You know, the other, the other thing with that, that I think dovetails uh, very importantly on this as well, Justin, is that, yeah. and, and I know you do this also. 
when you're purchasing a note, uh, there's a couple fail safe things in here that you need to look at. So we talk about, okay, if, if the, if the note that we purchase happens to go bad and, and they can, any performing note can go bad at any time. That's just the nature of the business. All right. We want to determine whether it's something short term or whether it's something that's insurmountable. So, yep. uh, and we'll, we'll deal with that as it may need be. But as that interest is accruing, the other fail safe that we have in, uh, in this situation, we typically are not buying newly created all right. I don't know about you, but I'm yeah. typically not buying newly created notes. All right. The highest uh, default rate of notes is typically in the first two years of yes. or after origination. And we're not typically buying that. Or if we do buy one like that, then the amount of the loan in relationship to the value of the property, there's at least 30 to 40 percent of equity in there to protect us as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that. If we do have to take it to share of sale, all right, it we can get all of our legal collectible balance, and there's still it still is um, viable for another investor to purchase it and rehab it and put it back on the market. We we want that property to sell at the share of sale. We don't necessarily um, want to take it back. Can we? And do we have the expertise to handle it? If it does, yes, we do. All right, but that's not the preferred way because we want to make sure that. Our, that our capital partners totally paid out at that time. And we want our capital back at that point as well, because we've, we've fronted the foreclosure process and that takes money to go through that, paying attorney fees, yeah. et cetera. All right. And we're fronting that also. So we're, we're in the same boat with the capital partner in that respect. Jay, let's talk, let's talk about some of the, the bad actors in our business. Um, a private investor, they need to hear what are some red flags when they're talking with somebody that is kind of preaching what we're doing? It's like asking for private investment capital, going to buy this asset. Um, what have you seen out there um, real quick that people are doing that you need to be like, hey, that's a red flag. You shouldn't invest with somebody that, that is like that. Um, someone's not really to sit, not willing to sit down with you one-on-one. -on -one. I love one-on-one -on -one conversations and talking with our capital partners to really find out what are they wanting to accomplish. If I can understand what they're trying to accomplish in their investing in the purpose and what's their timeline, then we can typically customize something that's going to fit that to help yeah. them to achieve what they're wanting to do. If it's, if it's just someone, it's a slick talker, they're making a presentation and we both make presentations. All right. But they're not willing to give you a direct definitive answer on certain things or, you know, in that respect, that should be, that should be one really red flag. I'd say another real flat red flag is if they don't have a track uh, you know, a, a track record behind mm -hmm. them. Okay. Um, you, you know, and we all have to start somewhere. Okay. Right. I, I mean, I get it. All right. I understand that. Um, you know, it's the first private capital partners that I had that, you know, they invested, they tipped their toe in the water initially. All right. Until they got to see how our operations are, what we do, we pay consistently every month, those types of things. And, and now, you know, they've, they've opened up a whole lot more money, all right, to invest with us because they feel comfortable in what we do and how we operate. Disclose, disclose, disclosures. Yeah. All right. You got, you, you got to be forthright, honest, you know, you can't, you can't say here, oh no, these don't ever go bad. It, they do. Okay. So you got to yeah. have the contingencies in place to be able to do that, to handle that. Yeah. And do you have the knowledge in which to handle? Those are questions that you need to be asking. All right. Uh, whoever that you're 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 yeah. looking to work with in that respect, I would say probably um, all the things that you said are exactly what what I would say to somebody. But also keep in mind, um, you know, try to get from them like a reference. Sure. So who is the last person that you've done a deal with? Who are mm -hmm. the last three people that you've done a deal with? I would like to have their contact information and talk to them about their experience with you, especially if you don't know them personally. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then you point you put the nail on the head with my favorite one is the the slick car salesman <laughs> if it's too good to be true it pro probably is and and what i tell people especially if i've never met them before and i say look um if you can't put your head on your pillow at night without being restless about this investment mm -hmm. or dealing working with me then walk away just yeah. walk we're away. not a fit we're not a fit then. i yeah. don't want you to feel like every time you go to bed wondering oh my god is my money am i going to ever see my money again like that is the last thing i want and i don't i don't want you to work with me if that's how you feel yeah. or with anybody else and so that's kind of that's kind of the other tests that I, I tell people like look there's way too many people out here doing this type of business there's a lot of different people to choose from you need to find the person that matches with you so i like what you said about the track record i definitely think you should get some references and if somebody's being pushy about it that's not the person you want to be in bed with, with who did with you learn mind. from too i mean i mean i know who you learned from you knew you know who i learned from but oh yeah 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 do they if they happen if the i'll say the sponsor okay or That's a good in this one. yeah um where did they learn how to do this and and find out who that is do they have a good track record who they yeah. learn from all right that's critically important yeah. all right um and do they have the resources if we say if either one of us happen to run into a situation we're not sure to handle who do we go to okay right. well I know in both of our situations here that, that we have people to go to that have been doing this 30, 40 years. I mean, yeah. collectively, they've got like 90 to 100 years of experience. <laughs> right. Do you, do you <laughs> think that there's not yeah. probably anything they haven't dealt with? Right. Okay? That's our the right backup. direction. Exactly. That's our backup. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so the strength of the training and the knowledge and the relationships that we have with those who have gone before us successfully and continue to, to be successful, that's invaluable. That's absolutely, and that's just gold. That's what that absolutely. is. That's perfect. Well, thanks, Jay. Uh, I appreciate all your feedback and your, and your uh, honest canter back and forth with what we're talking about as private investors today. Um, Jay, you, your company is Cassidy Investments and it's CassidyInvestments.com is the website, correct? That's correct. That's right. And the best way to get a hold of you is info at CassidyInvestments.com. That's the easiest way. It comes in uh, right into our, our office and we'll address it in, uh, as they come in and, and respond, get back to you. That's what we'll do. So, And then those of you who want to check out uh, Jay and his son-in-law, Kyle, they do a note talk on the last Thursday of every month from 12 to 1 Eastern time. I believe it's on, is it your Facebook Live? Is that what you do? Uh, it's a, uh, it's a zoom. It's a okay. zoom. Uh, if you want to sign up and be part of that, uh, just go to our website and sign up for the live meetings and we'll send you, we typically send awesome. a notification out about a week ahead and then like a day or so ahead is what we basically do. And we do it for 12 to one. And pretty much we talk all things notes. We typically have an agenda, but we want it to be a situation where it's helping you. So we take questions directly from, whoever's awesome. on at that point and answer your questions. So if you have something, that's a burning question that you don't know the answer to bring it where if, if I don't know, if we don't know, we'll go find out and get back awesome. to you. So how's that? That's all right, Jay. <laughs> Thanks again for being on, on the show today. Really appreciate it. This is season six, episode number two. I'm Justin Bogart. I got my friend Jay Redding here, Cassidy investments. You can email him info at Cassidy investments.com and we will see you guys on the next episode. Take care, Jay. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. My privilege. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Be The Bank. We hope you learned something from today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review us. Plus, check out our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Be The Bank and on Instagram at Be The Bank Podcast. Be The Bank is sponsored by American Note Buyers. Thanks again for listening.